Hello and good morning or afternoon, depending on your time zone. My name is Missy Coffey, and I have the pleasure of co-directing the PDG B5 Technical Assistance Center with Kathy Hubler. In addition to my role as a center director, I provide technical assistance on early childhood data. Over the last 10 years, I've been working with you and your colleagues across the country to create early childhood integrated data systems. I'm excited to kick off the data systems strand today by sharing more innovative ways that data analytics are being used to inform mixed delivery systems. So let's dive in. So we've all been there before. We get a call from a policymaker's office asking the dreaded question, how many? It could be how many children with special needs are served in various publicly funded programs, how many teachers have a BA, or in the rare instance where additional resources are being available, are available, they ask the question, if, if we increase funding by X dollars, how many additional children could be served? We work to gather the data or try to answer the question. And while we are doing so, they call another program office and they ask the same question, leading another state leader to try to use their data to respond. Now you have two state leaders while using valuable time to gather this information. Will they come to the same conclusion? And how will any differences be explained? It is not common for policymakers to fully understand the nuances of our early childhood programs across the state. And those who are, in business, who are often business leaders may assume that the basic data on early childhood, uh, early childhood programs and services are easily available. They are sometimes confused when we provide different answers to the counts that we are providing. And maybe knowing or unknowingly, they pit one program against another for resources. As I was reminded by New Jersey's team earlier this week, state leaders are stronger together. And we've seen the impact that it has when you all have access to high quality information across programs. You and your teams are able to support your decisions and respond to external questions. As you continue to work to integrate data, the need for responsive data analytics is critical. The session today is going to highlight some of the innovative solutions to 2020's most pressing early childhood issues. So let's start by taking a look around us right now. What do you have that provides you with information about your health, tasks, locations, deliveries, et cetera? Are you wearing a smartwatch? Are your steps being tracked on your phone? Do you get an alert when your family's close to maxing out on your data plan? Can you see which of your family members is using the most data? We've become accustomed to using data in our daily lives. And here are a few more examples. We use technology to provide us with information about whether we are getting enough exercise. Do you know that there are more uh, than a dozen companies that make wearable devices? According to the data released recently, as recent as October, 396 million wearable devices were shipped out in 2020. And it's a $62 billion industry. Companies like Fitbit and Apple are providing us with real-time information about whether we are getting enough exercise by providing us with data analytics such as heart rate and oxygen levels, amount of sleep, length of exercise, distance traveled, and more. Do you use an app or a web-based platform to track your financial resources? In 2019, 11% of the US population reported using a personal finance app. With a click of a button, we can see what we spent across various accounts on food last weekend, shopping last month, groceries for an entire year. We can use that information to adjust our budgets, make sure we are saving enough for retirement, and planning for vacations that we hope to go on when we can all travel again. And speaking of travel, in light of the pandemic, we received data on a daily basis about the number of new cases, deaths, the number of vaccines in each phase of development. Governors are using this data to make decisions about the stay-at-home orders based on ICU capacity and other critical information. As many families make plans for the holidays, we use this data to decide whether it's safe to travel. So as we continue to use more data in our daily lives, we are recognizing the gap in information we have to inform decisions about our mixed delivery systems. Unlike businesses that have long depended on data, they can integrate it across departments and companies and now platforms to inform financial decisions. We do not have the resources that companies do, yet policymakers often assume that the data exists. Many of you are asked the following questions and the program administrators are asked program administrators, we wonder, do we have programs that are ready to meet the needs of eligible families? Are supports in place for children and families to transition to kindergarten? Are there state policies supporting workforce development that lead to positive child and family outcomes? These questions lead to more questions about the populations and which services, what's the impact? 
and, to, and except for a few that we will hear from today, who will provide the count with many, many caveats. We do not have a distinct count of children served by publicly funded programs. So despite the lack of information, I am so encouraged by all of you and the innovative solutions that you are making with the resources that you do have. You and your teams have developed partnerships with researchers, negotiated contracts with vendors for discounted business information tools, refused to accept what many thought would be impossible. You focus on the benefit that comes from having real-time, robust information ready to advocate for the needs of children and family across your systems. And you don't focus on any one program, but on the system as a whole. Today, I have the pleasure of highlighting a few of the state data system innovations that will be discussed in more detail in the breakout rooms. For example, in collaboration with stakeholders from every early childhood program offered in the state, Utah created a statewide community assessment tool, which they refer to as the CAT. The CAT provides information that each program needed about their services available, eligible populations, risk factors to inform planning across programs. In collaboration with EC DataWorks, they designed the EASY framework that highlights eligibility, access, and services, as well as impact, which is an enhanced feature building upon basic community assessments. Additionally, Utah is one of the states that can report a distinct count of children. And although there are many caveats to the data, it is a start that has demonstrated the capacity to report counts across programs, and they continue to refine it as they add new data partners and are asked new questions from their state leaders. Geomapping is also a great way to visually display critical data. Georgia and Florida are two states that have added these analytic features to statewide early childhood data systems. And their program leaders and families are using it to make decisions about the care given in any region. We've discussed the supports for transitions. As Jana mentioned earlier this week, it is not only about children being ready for school, but the schools and communities being ready for the child. Texas used this broader lens to create the expanded school readiness tool called TexR3. Texas Ready Children, Ready Schools, and Ready Communities. They integrated data from child care subsidy with KEA data, as well as other various data sources across the state to develop these analytics. They're used to help ensure that decision makers have relevant information to support the transition to K. The Texas team has shared how they aligned this tool with the professional development annual, um, annual planning cycle so local schools and communities can leverage the data and create co and coordinate PD offerings across school districts and community-based programs to ensure that staff are trained and ready to meet the needs of children. In Minnesota, the team recently created uh, data analytics to respond to the critical health and emergency care needs of families in the state. Leveraging the investments made by Race to the Top, Early Learning Challenge, and former SLDS, or Statewide Longitudinal Data System grants, they used their early childhood data system to build new analytics and respond to the emerging, uh, the emerging needs presented by the pandemic. And these are incredible successes and a great deal of work and imagination went into the creation of the tools in a field that historically collects a tremendous amount of data, but often lacks the resources to use the information assets to better inform policy and program decisions. So as we move into the sessions, consider the ways that data could inform better decisions. How do we also know, but we also need to know that having data alone will not change behavior. To support the use of data, we have to build the capacity of our teams. That means providing training, developing processes that require information, establishing data governance, and providing access to this high quality information. Over the last decade, many are, one of my favorite questions I've used to identify common needs across programs has been, what could you do with integrated data that you couldn't do today? The answer to that may be similar across many states, but the prioritization of how to respond to each of those has varied based on the unique needs that you all have. You, uh, you can use these responses to the question to design pilot data sharing uh, projects across agencies. Texas used this pilot to create the expanded school readiness tool, and other states have used the, the answer to this question to begin to build out the early childhood integrated data system uh, use cases using their PDGB5 grants, many of which are going to be shared in the sessions today. Additionally, this step does not require significant funding for a data system. Starting with a use case is a great way to demonstrate a potential, and Arkansas is gonna talk about their uh, approach today, that how they developed their use case and their conceptual model before they even began to integrate the data. Additionally, we need to consider strategies to develop data literacy of our state administrators. 
Those of us in early childhood come to this field with diverse backgrounds and educational experiences, but common, commonly not much background on data. We need to use our technical assistance and other education to provide professional development, not only to our region and local programs, but to our state staff. This will help the teams to ask thoughtful questions of the data and reduce the anxiety that comes to working with data. And yesterday we learned more about state research partnerships. These can be an effective tool, both in using the data, but also developing the capacity of your team to analyze the data. Today, Florida will demonstrate the system that they have developed with their research partners as a model for effective partnerships. And finally, we need to establish a culture of data use. This takes many forms, but one way you can do this is by assessing the data that are currently used when I'm making decisions and find ways to embed more data in the regular conversations that are happening in your state. Hopefully we're not using data once when they are high stake or once a year, but they're ongoing conversations to build the use of continuous improvement for our states. You have all inspired me and I appreciate how gracious those who are presenting today have been with their time. It is so much easier to see the potential when other, when share, when other states share their examples. Um, it's so much easier than staring at a blank piece of paper. So today I hope you walk away with a few new ideas that will support the work you're gonna, that you are gonna do as you build out your mixed delivery system. Today we offer you six sessions that highlight some of the innovations across the country. You have a chance to hear more about how data analytics are informing resource decisions, transitions, coordinated enrollment, and statewide mental health consultation practices. And as you probably know at this point in the convening, the session will end and you will need to join your concurrent session. The concurrent state sessions will start in approximately 15 minutes at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 Mountain Time, and 11 Pacific. We encourage you to use this time to grab a glass of water, take a quick break, and come back ready for a discussion. You can also join the rooms a little early and get a chance to talk to some of your peers and your area colleagues. I'm also gonna encourage you to join tonight's networking session. If you'd like to uh, join the conversation on workforce research partnerships, data systems or governance, and you wanna to continue to have the thoughts from your peers and bring some questions that you have as your from your team, you can find the link on your sessions page on the website. This is a good opportunity to come with any questions, learn from each other, and there's also some fun social interaction and trivia games. So come meet some new folks. Thank you for joining and I hope you enjoy today's sessions.